The city of Petra is one of the most mysterious and fascinating places in the world. For centuries, people have been drawn to its temples and its rich history has been the subject of countless books, films, and documentaries. Today, there are still many unanswered questions about this incredible city, but that only adds to its allure. So buckle up and get ready to be transported back in time to the city of Petra. First, let's see an interesting fact about this city. The city lines up with the sun. The ancient Nabataeans who built Petra had a special regard for the sun, which they saw as a source of life, light, and mystery. As a result, most of Petra's stunning architecture is really coordinated with solar cycles, with the focus on the summer and winter solstices. Petra, an ancient city in southwest Jordan that was the center of an Arab kingdom in Hellenistic and Roman times. The city was built on a terrace pierced from east to west by the Wadi Moza or the Valley of Moses. One of the places where the Israelite leader Moses, according to legend, struck a rock and water gushed forth. Petra's story began with the Nabataeans, a tribe of Arabian nomads. They wandered from place to place as nomads, living off the land and herding camels, sheep, and goats. The Nabataeans' strong survival abilities and understanding of the desert helped them become effective traders throughout time. They took control of key commercial routes that transported spices and incense from Arabia to Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea. We know that as desert traders, these nomadic merchants got very wealthy and gradually gave up their goatskin tents to create the spectacular mansions and structures that formed Petra. But it's unclear why these folks abandoned their wandering lifestyle to settle down in one spot. Petra arose in the midst of a harsh, desolate desert. So how did the old city keep its abundant harvests, verdant gardens, and even public pools? Because they knew how to gather and distribute water, the Nabataeans were specialists at surviving in the desert. Water was transported from perennial springs and seasonal streams via an extraordinary network of rock-cut canals and subterranean water pipelines. The Nabataeans also devised a method for collecting and storing water in waterproof holes known as cisterns. These subterranean cisterns protected water from both evaporation and attackers. Petra began as a major stopover for both Nabataeans in foreign commerce. Textiles, incense, spices, ivory, and other costly products cultivated or made in Arabia, Asia, and Africa were conveyed by these nomadic merchants. Petra is replete with magnificent tombs, temples, and residences carved into the sandstone cliffs. These intricate buildings were carved by hand out of the rose-red rocks, then coated in plaster and brightly painted. Petra's residents loved to show off their wealth, so they recruited expert builders to create these wonders. Starting from the top, builders etched the intricate motifs into the sandstone cliffs by hand. The huge columns, vast staircases, and classical sculptures demonstrate the impact of interaction with Greece and Rome. Along the natural curves of cliffs and canyons, winding roadways, stairways, and water channels were also cut. However, the most beautiful road in the city was not created by people. The tiny, twisting ravine that led into Petra, known as the Sikh, is a natural beauty. The mighty Roman Empire was spreading throughout the Middle East as Petra developed. The Romans were anxious to extend their empire and gained possession of the Nabataean capital in AD 106. The Roman conquest appears to have been calm, and life in Petra appears to have continued unaffected. However, the empire left an indelible imprint on the old metropolis. The distinctive Roman style can be found throughout Petra, including monuments, sculptures, public areas, and even the city's architecture. The Romans created new roadways, such as the spectacular colonnaded street that went through Petra's heart. This long, straight roadway lined up with huge columns was unlike anything else in the city. For the following 300 years, Rome dominated Petra binding the fate of the ancient city to the empire. Rome eventually shifted the trading hub north. For most of its trade, the empire also relied on ships by water. The prominence of Petra in the ancient world began to wane. A dramatic event occurred in the Roman Empire in AD 330, more than 200 years after Rome acquired possession of Petra. Constantine I, the first Christian empire, relocated the primary capital from Rome to Byzantium. The fledgling Byzantine Empire's rulers intended to propagate Christianity. 
Over the next century, the inhabitants of Petra gradually gave up their pagan gods in favor of this new religion. The Petra church, the city's largest church, was a magnificent emblem of this new era. Even a few once sacred graves, such as the urn tomb, have been converted into churches. The city's importance as a trading center had been dwindling. Trade routes were migrating to the north or to the sea. In AD 363, a major earthquake damaged much of the city's structures as well as its water supply system. This natural tragedy was a watershed moment for the Nabataeans. Only a few people lived in and around Petra by AD 700. The city was eventually lost to the outer world. Western explorers would not locate the old city for another 500 years. During his travels in 1812, Swiss adventurer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt was the first European to describe them. At the time, the Greek Church of Jerusalem had a diocese at Al Karak called Batra, and the Jerusalem clergy believed that Karak was the ancient city of Petra. Burkhardt already spoke Arabic well and was on his way to investigate the Niger River when he heard rumors of a dead city containing Prophet Aaron's tomb. He got obsessed with locating the city. He then disguised up as a local and talked solely in Arabic, taking a goat with him with the intention of sacrificing it in honor of Aaron's tomb. He was persuaded after one day of searching that he had discovered the lost city of Petra. With the Western world now aware of their presence, they quickly piqued the curiosity of architects, academics, and others. An official initiative to dig and examine Petra was initiated in 1929 by British archaeologists Agnes Conway and George Horsfield, as well as academics Tafik Cannon and Ditlev Nielsen. Numerous discoveries have been made in the decades following, including the 1993 discovery of Byzantine-era Greek scrolls and the more recent satellite imaging of a previously undiscovered massive edifice buried beneath the dunes of the region. When Petra was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985, the Jordanian authorities forcefully removed Petra Bedouin tribespeople who had constructed homes amid the city's remnant ruins. The location was named one of the seven new wonders of the world in the early 2000s, resulting in an increase in visitors. Since then, attempts have been undertaken to conserve the Petra remains from over-tourism, as well as floods, rain, and other natural issues. Now you must be wondering whether you should visit this place or not. Let me give you a few more reasons to visit. Nothing prepares you for the tremendous size of Petra. The main entry leads you through tiny, towering gorges that make you feel like you're in a movie. Yet, the first glance of the treasury is as awe-inspiring as it must have been for Johann Ludwig Burckhardt when he found the city centuries ago. It's easy to get lost in this enormous location, with structures delicately etched into the rock in every direction you look. With the noise and bustle of modern-day market stalls and visitors, you can almost envision what it must have been like as a vibrant community all those years ago. The monastery, the city's greatest landmark, is located in the city's highest reaches and is considered to date back more than 2,000 years. Standing at the foot of this great work of art, it's not difficult to be taken away by its magnificence. In fact, that is a sense you will undoubtedly have during your visit to Petra. This brings us to the end of the video. Don't be afraid of giving suggestions on future videos in the comment section below.